Hi everyone, welcome to the Tiny Studio. I am Nell. Welcome to Dreadlock Love. This is a show about all things dreads. I'm celebrating 20 years as a dreadlock diva, a lochnista queen, and I am here to offer wisdom and guidance and support, encouragement, and inspiration to everyone just starting out on this journey and to those who are in the middle of their journey and enjoying it and enjoying their life as a dreadlock gentleman, a dreadlock diva, or we cannot forget our sister lock community. So welcome to Dreadlock Love. How are you today? What we're going to talk about in this episode is Lent. Lent can be an issue when it comes to dreadlocks, um, especially if you are of African descent. Lent can become a thing. And for some, some reason, our hair you know, in its dreadlock form, we attract the lint. <laughs> we really, really do. And I have had experiences with having lint trapped in my hair. First of all, how does lint get trapped in your locks? Well, the same way lint finds itself on various places. <laughs> and sometimes hair but it comes from the fact that we may have clothes or clothing made of materials that sometimes does a, a piling type of situation where um, um, the material piles and that causes you to have lint in your hair so when you're putting on a shirt or I should say a shirt or a sweater that is made from um, a fiber or a textile that piles well then bits of that fabric can find itself in your locks maybe you're wearing um, it's winter and or fall or winter and you're wearing scarves and hats sometimes you can find uh, that you will attract lint from the materials or the fibers of that scarf or um, hat. Perhaps it's your bedding or your linen. Perhaps you have uh, linen on your bed that attracts, uh, that your hair can attract uh, particles from that uh, material into your locks. So there are many ways that you can attract lint in your hair. So what should you do if you find that you have lint in your hair? Well, what I do is I take a pair of tweezers and I look and if I see a piece of lint I use my tweezer and I pull it out I don't have any lint in my hair that I can see at this time I'm looking for some lint but I don't seem to have any which is great and how it is that I don't have any lint in my hair is very, very simple. However, I didn't stumble onto this big secret until, you know, maybe four or five years into my life journey. What's the secret? Well, I keep my hair covered. And... Uh, that's a secret. <laughs> well, not really. I keep my hair covered, especially at night. And the linen that I use on my bed at night, or the, the linen on my bed, period, 
is not made of materials that can cause lint to, you know, appear on my hair or in my dreadlocks. Um, the clothing that I wear, you know, I live in Florida, so I'm not wearing a lot of scarves and hats and things of that nature. So I really don't have that problem. But when I lived in Detroit, I always wore items that did not pile or did not produce that fuzzy stuff that turns into lint. And that's how um, I, you know, begin to learn how to keep lint from appearing on or inside of my dress. I also was very careful about places that I sat, couches and chairs and things of that nature, because I didn't want those things to, you know, I didn't want to attract lint or other debris to my locks. So there are things that you can do to prevent attracting lint to your hair but when it comes to getting the lint out of your hair that becomes and can be a little bit tricky and if you don't do it correctly you can end up causing uh, thinning and some breakage on your for your dreads so as I said I use a tweezer so what that means is if I saw some lint in my, oh, look, there's some lint. If I, if I find lint, you see that? There's some lint right there. Now, what I could do if it's a boss, if it were, it's a bothersome, I could just pick it out. It's really no big deal, right? It's, it's just lint. Just pick it, you know, pick it out. But if you find that um, you have more than one spot where there is lint, you can always use some tweezers. And so just be careful. Like here's the, here's the piece of lint. Can you see it? Oops. There's some lint. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my tweezers. I'm just going to pluck it out gently so I have the lint and I haven't caused any damage to my locks now if you find that you are sitting down with some tweezers and you're just <laughs> what you need to do is you need to work on ways of preventing lint buildup in your locks. Oh, and another good way to get lint out of your hair is when you wash it. So when you wash your dress and your dress are wet and you see some lint there, you can use your fingers or you can use some tweezers and you can easily remove the lint from your hair. Now, let's say your, your lint situation is really bad. <laughs> and more than likely that happens when you are wearing items that, as I say, that pile. And that's how, and if your locks are laying, you know, right upon these these fabrics that pile of course you're going to have lint as you see that scarf there it doesn't pile but you know you may have a scarf that accumulate a uh, piles and you your hair begins to accumulate accumulate lint what do you do well be, you could also wash it get some tweezers and tweeze it out. However, what you don't want to do if your lint or if the lint is embedded into the body of your lock 
and you can't reach it, then I would not advise using tweezers or a knife or uh, <laughs> a screwdriver or did I already say needles? You don't want to do that because when you insert those items into your lot, you're going to do some damage. So I would not advise that. But what you could do if it's annoying to you, what you could do is use a semi-permanent um, or permanent uh, color to your hair. So let's say your hair is what? Black maybe. And maybe you have uh, some lint going on in there and it's disturbing for you. You can go ahead and get some Clairol and put that on there and be done with it. <laughs> No, if it's that disturbing, I haven't met anyone who had so much lint in their hair where, you know, they felt like, you know, it was too much and they had to go ahead and color their hair. I've never, I've never, um, ran, I haven't ran into that person, but that's not to say that it doesn't happen and that 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 individual that dreadlock diva or gentleman is you know disturbed by all the lint that's present in their hair oh and i, and I don't want to forget this another way you can find yourself in a situation where you have a lot of lint in your hair is by the type of towels that you use to dry your locks after you shampoo your hair so if you're using a towel a white towel to dry your hair then of course you're going to find yourself with lint that's white in your hair um I use dark towels to dry my hair and uh, my towel is brown a really d deep dark brown and um, it doesn't pile though so I don't have to worry about lint balls getting in my locks so you have to be intentional with what you're uh, trying to accomplish if you're trying to keep locks trying trying to keep lint from being in the body of your locks so that may mean that you may have to buy a really good towel um, you can find some really good towels at Target um, home goods Bed Bath and Beyond uh, sometimes Burlington carries some really uh, high-end uh, bath towels pick up one or two just for your locks get them in a dark color get them maybe in the color of brown or black so that when you wash your hair you don't have to worry about lint getting inside of your locks and if you have a serious case of that and you have removed as much as you can from the surface of the body of your locks then you might want to decide to do something else which may be you may want to go ahead and grab yourself a box of color and do something to your locks in that fashion um, but I still advise being careful as to how you remove the lint from your locks and then you don't want to be obsessive compulsive about lint <laughs> because see when you be obsessive and, and compulsive about lint you know it creates the perfect storm because there you are you're obsessive compulsive about the lint in your locks and so now you're using tweezers you're using needles you're using screwdrivers you're doing all of these things to get this 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 material out of your locks and what you end up doing is you end up damaging your locks and that's not what you want you don't want to do that. You don't want to cause tears. 
uh, micro fissures, holes in your locks because that only does what? It creates thinning and then the next thing you know, you have what? Break it. <laughs> And that, trust me, is not what you want. I would rather have a few lip balls in my hair than to have some of my, my, have my locks popping off in the most awkward public of places. So that's not what you want. Um, sometimes you can brush your hair or brush your lock and you can get the lint out of your locks. There are several things as I said that you can do but you want to be careful when you're doing them and as you saw when I was removing some lint from my lock I was very careful about how I removed it. I don't think I have any more lint and sometimes the lint can can most definitely be embedded into the body of your lock. And what you don't want to do is you don't want to go into the lock and be picking the lint out. You know, that's, 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 that's crazy. <laughs> don't do that. Don't dig. Don't be digging into your locks to get out some lint. If you can get it out with your finger, that's wonderful. But if you can't get it out with the tweezers, just leave it alone. <laughs> just leave it alone. Is it really that serious? Is it really, is it that serious that you want to damage the body of your locks? No. And who's really going to be looking at your locks that tough? Who is really going to be inspecting your locks in that manner? Because if you are around someone that's going to be inspecting your locks for lint, maybe that person needs to be uh, X'd out your circle because that's ridiculous, you know? And then also understand that what makes your locks beautiful is the fact that there is lint in them. <laughs> there will be lint in your lock because we're human. We're human beings and our hair textures attract many things. I have seen uh, people, uh, dreadlock divas and gentlemen, take down their locks. And inside of their locks, guess what's there? Lint! <laughs> the lint is inside the locks and no they might not have seen it okay but of course it's there because we wear clothes we wear clothes we have linen on our beds we use towels to dry our bodies clothes and fabrics and textiles all of those things are a part of our daily existence so when you take all if i decide to, which, which i i'm not which if i decided to take all my locks down or take a lock down guess what's going to be in it it's there's going to be lint in here <laughs> so to be obsessive compulsive about lint in your locks doesn't make sense doesn't make sense at all just if you see some lint if it's obvious pull it out but don't do that other stuff I've seen people on YouTube taking needles and doing basically doing commit some type of surgery on their locks just to get at the lint no 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 don't do that don't do that don't do that it's not necessary it's really not that deep for real and if you find that it is it is that important to you wash your hair and just get some tweezers and gently remove the lint. The lint that you cannot remove, leave it be. Your hair is dreading and soon your hair is going to cover over that spot anyway. It's going to absorb the lint. So 
there's no need to do anything super drastic or damaging to your locks. Not at all, excuse me. So, the next time you see some lint, what should you do? Well, you can just plug it out with your hands, with your finger. Just pluck that piece of lint out, shoo it on its way somewhere else. Or you could get yourself a pair of tweezers and you could remove the piece of lint from your hair. Or you can wash your hair and as you dry your hair, make sure that you get your tweezers and you tweeze out the lint. That's it. No needles, no screwdrivers, no little bitty knives. Do not do that. Why? Because you can cause fit tiny fissures or holes in your dreadlocks and that can cause thinning and soon breakage. How do you prevent lint from becoming absorbed in your locks? Well, it's the type of bedding that you use. Make sure that you're using sheets that do not pile or do not promote fuzz or lint to get into your locks. Make sure that you wear clothing that does not fuzz or pile, produce lint balls. Because if you do and you put that over your head, you're going to get some lint. If you're brushing your hair, make sure you clean your brush every day or whatever your routine is. Make sure you clean your brush so that when you're brushing your locks, you don't brush lint onto your locks. Thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of Dreadlock Love. If you have questions, please feel free to drop down in the comment section and leave a question and I may address that question in another Dreadlock Love video. If you have not already subscribed to my channel, Simply Nails Tiny Studio, what are you waiting for? Aren't you enjoying the discussions and the topics that are being featured on this show, on this channel? I know that you are. So go ahead and subscribe so that you become notified each time I pop into the tiny studio to talk about dreads and my 20th year celebration of wearing or being a dreadlock diva, a lock nista queen. <laughs> and make sure that you like so that I know what type of subjects that really piques your interest and I can address them in future shows. So thank you so much for hanging out with me in the tiny studio. I love you. Have a great, great day.